Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. Okay, so I think it's fair to say that this is an emergency video broadcast. And as always, I'm gonna be counting on you to help me share this as widely as you possibly can, all right? Please um, stay with me. I wanna show you something here. So yesterday I, I received an email and the email went this way. It says, hello, brother Joe. Hope this email finds you well. I got an email from my company. Kindly see the attached. And I can 100% confirm what you have been saying. God bless you for your efforts and time. And then here is the attachment. Let me see if I can read you a little bit of what is written in this attachment, which I hope I'm able to share with you because I'm currently on a trip. And um, the first thing that happened to me when I got this email was, oh my gosh, I need to get back to my base so I can use this to connect a few other dots that I have been putting together for some time. This is the kind of stuff I want to do in my studio, like a documentary, but you know, because of the sense of urgency attached to stuff like this, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to wait. And coupled with the fact that while I was still contemplating whether to make this video or wait till I get home, the Krokos City Mall massacre in Russia just happened. And that literally took my sense of urgency from a place of say 80 to 90 percent by 1000 percent and why am i saying sense of urgency sense of urgency sense of urgency actually borders around the proximity our proximity to the activation of all the evils these guys are planning which i have been talking about all along and um, of course, you've heard me say in multiple videos that they're planning a third world war. Uh, they're trying to stop Donald Trump. There's a whole lot that is going on. And this that just happened has brought us a thousand times closer to the activation of the doomsday that we've been talking about and we've been praying about the whole time. Um, the caption of, of the attachment he sent to me says national office bomb threat and lockdown procedure course modules now to all national associates it reads it says Canada has published new bomb threat and lockdown procedures via pit stop under policy and resources as part of the initiative to bring awareness of these location specific procedures two mandatory course modules have been uploaded to the whatever learning center for your completion and then it goes on and on and on now these guys are not saying to you that oh we believe there might be a bomb somewhere so just be careful no they have introduced location specific course modules you are learning this you are getting used to it and look at the bottom here it says the deadline to complete these courses is april 30th 2024 that's canada they're doing the same thing in america they're doing the same thing in the uk in parts of europe these people are preparing you for an emergency what emergency is this that they are preparing you for like this they even mentioned here bomb threat and lockdown lockdown procedures meaning that very soon you're going to have to face another form of lockdown the last one that our world experienced which was so disastrous that many people lost their lives and people lost their means of livelihood it was in 2020 the covid 19 lockdown that happened and it came with its dark cloud that hovered over the world and many thought that was going to be the end of the world and now look what is happening we told you at that time if you check some of my videos i told you that these guys were only flying that kite it was going to be a kind of test run of what is to come it was a preamble to what is to come and now we have gotten to the place where I believe they are planning to actually activate that which was to come. 
the bigger picture of their evil satanic plans for humanity. Look at what these guys are doing. And now see what has happened in Russia. You know, I have too many things in my head. I always ask God, please, Holy Spirit, help me to be able to pull these things out in a way that the people who are listening may be able to understand, not just to hear me talk about mysterious things, but let them understand the sensitive nature, the, the urgency in these things. An empire is about to collapse. It's already collapsing in our world. It is the empire you've always known. Your fathers knew it. Your forefathers knew it. Everyone knew it. It was the dominant force on earth. Not anymore. And because this dominant force, this dominant force that I can decide, I can call king, the dominant king, is falling, is dying. The king now decides, look, you know what? Rather than lose all my strength and die, everything else and everyone else must die with me. Let everything just end so that we can start over. Maybe starting over would mean the rebirth of this old, dying, wicked king called the Euro uh, Colonial Empire that has ruled much of everything you think you call our world today for as long as you can remember. And the best way to understand this king is just remember the word unipolar world order. I have made videos where I explain all of these things. I don't know how much of my videos people out there are watching, but I know I think a bunch of people do. That's why I'm always begging people to share these videos. When I made the other video where I said something strange is happening, if you watch it very well, I think I pretty much broke everything down in a way that anybody who watches it can get to understand. Why are they after Russia today? Why? The mainstream media will have you believe that Russia is an enemy is trying to attack all of its neighbors. It's a bloody filthy lie. I told us in one of my videos how that Russia was invading Ukraine because of provocation that no one told you about on mainstream media. And before you know it, the Russian forces were in Kiev. We all watched all of this happen. <laughs> and while they were in Kiev, all of a sudden we saw them pulling back. And the mainstream media said, oh, the Ukrainian soldiers have begun to beat them back. So now they're going back. And they were making jest of the Russian soldiers. They said, oh, you thought you were going to take over Kiev in 48 hours. Now look at you. You know what happened at that time? Vladimir Putin got a peace proposal. And he consented to it and said, let's go and look for peace. This is what I've always wanted. Turkey was supposed to host. Even Zelensky was scared enough to say he would go with the peace deal. And they were ready to go to Turkey. And the only guarantee that they needed from Russia was that he was going to pull his army back from the Kiev region. And Vladimir Putin pulled his forces back which was what they were doing when they were mocking them on mainstream media without telling the rest of the people the truth. And when he did, it was time for the peace. Zelensky was no show. What happened? The incredibly disturbed human being that was the former prime minister of the UK had been sent by his paymasters because they don't have any power. They are nothing. They're like every civil servant in your 
of his secretariat. He has nothing. Those who own the country, who run the country, send that errand boy to Ukraine to go and tell Zelensky not to sign any peace deal with Russia. I'm not making this up. Look it up. Confessions are every look it up. This is exactly what happened. That's why when Tucker Carlson went to interview Putin in Russia, he wanted to interview that bloody thing. And he said, look, you have to pay me to interview me because he knows that there's no way they will interview him and not pull that fact from him. He will never grant any interview. He can only grant maybe BBC and CNN. And they will just ask him, how has it been since you left power? Have you been eating? What, what, kind, of, what kind of breakfast do you eat? Is it... Is it uh, 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 Spanish omelette or French omelette or is it UK omelette? Uh, what kind of bread? Uh, have you ever walked your dog past, you know, maybe 10 kilometers or one kilometer? Did, did you run or did you walk uh, the last time uh, it was snowing? Yeah, so what? this is the kind of stuff they will never, because they are all controlled by the same masters. They work for the same person. Now, I told you clearly that Russia is effectively destroying France in Africa. Many years ago, former French President Jacques Chirac was on record saying that, quote, let's face the fact that without Africa, France will return to the ranks of third world countries. Jack Chirac, a former president of France. So, basically, he's saying to you that the economic powerhouse of that France you're running to today from Africa is actually Africa. But Africans are like slaves. Forget about a few who are doing okay. Basically, going to France, you have to queue for visa. You even get denied. But they are admitting that the reason they are actually surviving and thriving as a first world economy is because they have turned and perpetually rendered Africa to remain in the status of a third world economy so they can stay and maintain their first world economy status. And it's like either this or this. So if Africa decides to come up to become first, they will go down and become the third and if they stay first, Africa will never rise to become the first. There is no meeting point. There is no common ground. It's either down and up or up and down. And so what did Russia do when Russia realized that France has joined others to come and attack Russia? Russia decided, you know what? I'm no more. I'm no longer going to stay neutral. I am going to effectively decapitate France economically because I know where the secret of the economic might is. It's in Africa. And so France, mm, fr uh, sorry, Russia stepped into Africa and began to take former French colonies away from France. Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger Republic, Central African Republic. And of course, I told you that Senegal is in play and that's why the elections in Senegal is not going to be easy because uh, Russia has got interest there. And the three Russian, I will call them now, they are not, they are partners. But the three former French colonies that are now calling Russia, that now see Russia as their big brother, are already looking in the direction of Senegal. They have 
been paying attention to Senegal. They have been sending people to get details of what is happening there. They are even making statements with respect to Senegal, telling everyone, putting everybody on notice, that they can't wait for their brothers to come and join them in their fold. Because remember, they just recently pulled away from ECOWAS. So they are standing on their own. It's almost like you have an alternate ECOWAS. And they need to fill their basket with more members. And it looks like their eyes are on Senegal. If you look, if you follow me on Twitter and you see one of the last posts, the recent posts I made on Twitter... I was breaking down what is really going on in Senegal. I broke it down. How that a guy, the most popular one, just like Nigeria's P2B during last year's election, the most popular one there is accused of receiving funding and backing from Russia. And they did not only jail him, they stripped him of the right to ever contest for the office of the president. So it's his ally who was supposed to be who was supposed to be his VP that is now running on his behalf. And he has told his members, his followers, to please throw their weight behind this guy. And these are the reformers who have vowed that the moment they get access to power, they are going to strip the nation of that shackle or of the shackles of French colonial power or colonial stranglehold on their country. Which is what their brother nations, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have done. So Senegal is in play. France is about to lose another one if care is not taken. What about DRC, the most blessed nation in the whole of this world? There is literally no natural resource on earth that you won't find in DRC except for the one they haven't looked for. You know what happened recently? DRC has signed a military pact with Russia. Technically, France has lost that one too. And it's not only, plan oh, it's not only France that's playing in DRC. Remember King Leopold of Belgium. Remember how many of our people he massacred because of the natural resources that God put in our own soil. We have been dealing with demons wearing human skin and appearing like us. But they are not humans. They are demons from the pit of hell. The story is out there. Every time an African rose to challenge them, they made minced meat. Of him. That's why today we have a superpower behind our bed because we could not have done this on our own. There's no way on earth Africans could have on their own broken free from these demons. It is another one that knows their secret that can only help us make it happen. And that one that has their secret is Russia. And not just that Russia has their secret, Russia can play the game better than them. Russia has only been quiet because he thought that they had some type of friendship or agreement with these guys. But when they began to renege on the promise they made to Russia that they were not going to expand NATO eastward, Russia said, okay, now let's play this game. And while these two elephants are fighting, we are not the ones losing. We are basically gaining. They say when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. But rather than suffer, we are flourishing. This is the first time I'm seeing two elephants fight and the grasses are rejoicing. And you think it's only Senegal and DRC that France is losing? What about Haiti? Haiti, <laughs> both America and France in play in Haiti. Haiti is America's next door. Cuba is happening all. Oh. But look at Haiti. Do you know that Russia has also been implicated in Haiti? I 
made an extensive post on Haiti. It's on my Twitter handle. In just two or three days, the post got more than one million views. So you can understand it was a major expose. I encourage you to go read it. At JC Okechuku on Twitter. So I don't waste too much time on this video. So you can see the Russian connection in Haiti. You went to look for the bear and the bear is now coming for you left, right and center everywhere. And so that's why I told people, watch out the body language of Macron. Macron is losing sleep every day. Every minute Macron is looking for how to fight. The Europeans know that Ukraine is losing. They know right now that the weapons they need is not coming the way it should come. The money they need to support Ukraine is not coming the way it should come. Americans are not planning to send anything, even though anything can change anytime. But the point is that even if you give them all the weapons in the world, they cannot match the Russian firepower. Russia has much more. And I have said this from 2022 when I told people that this battle is going to be Russia's for the winning. Everybody said, oh, forget it. Look what has happened. Ukraine is losing territory. They are losing their army. They are losing weapons. They are losing everything. Goodwill. All things that you can imagine. And they're still fighting. Despite all of that, Macron thinks it's okay to cross the red line and send French soldiers or NATO soldiers to fight in Ukraine, something that Russia says the moment it happens, it is a direct engagement. And so we can actually send weapons or send bombs to your own individual countries. Because the moment foreign NATO boots are confirmed on ground, sent officially by any NATO country, it seems, it means directly that, Russia, that NATO is directly engaging Russia in a war. And so all the NATO countries are in play now. Macron alluded to that. And when they told him, he said, well, yeah, that he just said that we should not, that people should not, you know, um, think that it is impossible that that should happen. And not long after he said that, Poland also insinuated that that is not impossible that NATO could at some point, send soldiers to Ukraine to fight Russia. Now, when you see him losing his cool and running around the whole place trying to mobilize people so that NATO can actually react and do something more impressive in Russia or in Ukraine against Russia, you can tell that the man is hungry for revenge because Russia is effectively, effectively bankrupting France by taking the breast milk off the mouth. That's what he's doing. Can you imagine what France has lost in Mali? All the massive good reserve that France has. Much of it came from Mali, yet Mali doesn't have a single gold reserve. It's just recently that they agreed, they signed a deal to build a major gold refinery in Mali, which would never have happened if they were still under the chains of satanic French colonialism. Not even new colonialism anymore, it's colonialism because French colonies in Africa are living as though they are still living in the colonial days. It's not neocolonialism. It's, it's worse than that. And they flood these nations with their lying media. France 24, uh, this one, ICI, or whatever they call themselves. And they keep brainwashing the people, damaging brain cells with lies, which was what they had been set up to do anyway. So now, in the heat of all that is happening, and given the fact that I told you in the previous videos I made, that these people are not going to allow Donald Trump come to power. That's why I, you've not seen me too active trying to defend or fight for Trump and all of that, because really, 
you can see how much he's winning you can see how many attacks are around him you can see what they're doing i told you trump will win by a landslide that no one has ever seen in american history they know this because if you know the percentage of democrats that have vowed to vote for donald trump you will shows will fill your whole body even as a democrat that's why you see what is happening at the southern border i've never in my life seen a country not even in a banana republic not even in nigeria that we say is a third world banana republic you can't even allow the sort of things we are watching on tv happening in america where strangers are told to just pour into the country do you think it is for nothing just pour in, just keep coming, just keep coming. And Texas is saying, we are having crimes on our streets. People are dying. What is wrong with you? They say, no, open the borders. Let them come, let them come. New York is saying, ah, look, we are so insecure because of this guy. They say, no, 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 let the guys keep coming. Unvetted for the most part. Do you know today in New York, National Guard, Army, are now in the subway because crime in the subway is now every minute or was every minute so people couldn't walk freely in the subways anymore they get attacked like they are living in is it Afghanistan? not even afghanistan is this insecure that's what has been happening in new york city subways until they now brought national guard something you can't see in most parts of the world and yet the immigrants are told to pour in, to pour in, and pour in. Whoever you are, just keep coming. <laughs> just claim asylum. Millions at this moment has happened. Before our eyes, we are witnessing the collapse of the Republic, engineered by these guys, just so that they can entrench themselves and rule the rest of us and run our lives to hell. But God will be with us and see us through. That's why I told you they're not going to let Trump come in because the moment he comes, the war in Ukraine ends. Almost all the wars you see today will end. The man stayed four years in power. There was not a single war. All this will end. NATO knows this. So American election this year, even if he's a dead man in a coffin, they will prefer the person to Trump. They're going to do everything to stop him. I told you, three options I gave you. Either they kill him, which they might not try because that is going to spark a lot of civil war in America. Or the other option I said, I think, was that they are going to start war. They start a war directly with the nation. Because you know that if America gets involved in a war, you cannot change the commander-in-chief during the time of war. So if they start a war directly, say, with Russia or anyone, and it has to be Russia, okay? Something happens now and the shots are fired. And they say America is at war with Russia and maybe with China too. Joe Biden stays on, just like Zelensky has stayed on in power. He's not even thinking of election because you can't change a commander-in-chief during the time of war. And then Trump cannot come. Now, the other option that we're looking at is what I see happening right now. How come all of a sudden Russia is being attacked just a few days after America had said intelligence report from the US embassy in Moscow that there is an imminent attack in a public gathering or at public gatherings in Moscow and told the American citizens to get out. They said it will happen in two days time. It didn't happen two days anymore. It took more than two days, but it happened exactly in a mass gathering, as they said. And now Russia is telling America, come clean with your intelligence, share it with us, let us know how you knew this would happen, and it happened like this. Who is behind it? We're getting there now. So what you see happening is that 
Engaging Russia directly and letting Russia know that you are engaging them is very dangerous. Russia can be reactionary because you know the military doctrine says the military is for defensive actions. So they wait till you attack them. When you attack them, they go after you. And then when they go after you, they go after you till they eliminate you. They don't go after you to give you tit for tat. They eliminate. So because of that, could it be that Russia is now officially, technically under attack by proxy? By proxy. If you watch the video of that Russian attack at Crocus Center, you can see how the, the gunmen were looking at people screaming and shouting for help and they were shooting them multiple times. Who could have penetrated this place and done something like this? Because of this now, Russia has said, no more entertainment activities in Moscow until further notice. Mm? I can tell you the intelligence has been dealing with this for some time, has been noticing that something is amiss. So war technically has been declared on Moscow, on Russia, without anyone openly saying from the other side that, hey, we are going to attack you or we are going to do this and that. So you can imagine there's going to be, you have to anticipate that there will be more coming after this one. And because Russia knows and understands how these things work and where they may be coming from, they are going to also begin to react openly, attack openly those who secretly sent men to attack them. They will find a way to attack them openly and the media will show you that one, but they will never reveal to you how the people who attacked Russia got the motivation and the supplies to attack Russia. But what you're going to see is when Russia reacts to that attack based on the intelligence that they have got, which they might not share with you, the whole world will now see that one and say, ah, Russia is a bully. They've gone after another nation again. Look what they are doing everywhere. But look, more than 40 Russian citizens dead. I'm sure that casualty figures are still going to increase. Over 100 injured. This was one of the biggest, one of the greatest tragedy in Russia in the recent times. And there's no way the retaliation for this is not going to be heavy. There's no way the world is not going to see the retaliation in black and white. It's going to be very impressive, but it will not deter. It will not stop more from happening. This is why I chose to make a video to show you that they are finally beginning to trigger and activate that event that will lead us to the doom that I have been prophesying all along. Not prophesying as religious prophecy, but politically prophesying. You're living in Europe, in America. I'm even tired of saying this. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. Because there's no way you watch like one, two, three of my videos, you won't hear where I've said that. I use it to always close all my videos. Make alternative plans. I've said this multiple times. See their email and the attachment the brother sent me. They're giving them till April 30th, 2024 to prepare themselves, to prepare themselves against the bomb and then lock down procedures because the moment one bomb drops in Canada or in UK or any European country, you are locked down. You are locked down. You are told that we are in a state of war with Russia. So you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't even fly to your home country. You are stuck there. If the bombs continue coming, you die wherever you are. Then a lot of people are going to wake up and remember, oh my gosh, I wish I listened to Joseph Okechuko. <clears throat> see what just happened in Russia? Watch immediately after this. You watch and see what will happen. They have been touching the tail of the lion. Now they've gone to 
pull the tail and probably use something to cut it so now you will see the kind of reaction you have not seen before from the russian federation they will take the time they will watch they will gather enough intelligence and when they start unleashing it will shock the world but you know a lot of people innocent are going to be caught in the crossfire and this is why i make my videos and this is why i ask you to please please do what you can to protect yourself if you gotta move away from the big cities do it if you need to leave some of these places leave i know you're gonna say but what do you want me to do i work here well when the time comes you're gonna find out that there's something that you actually love more which is your life than you do love your job I think I have to draw the curtain here. It's already a long video. But um, please take precaution and take very good care of yourself because this empire that is dying, the European colonial powers that are dying, that Russia is destroying, not only by taking the African colonies away from France, but also through BRICS, bricks that is creating all manner of alternatives to everything that the unipolar world set up by the colonial forces have been offering our world bricks is creating alternatives and they are working very well that's why russia has more than has thousands of sanctions from these people and yet the economy of russia has surpassed their own since the time russia came under this sanction regime how can you sanction somebody on everything sanctionable and yet they are doing better than you economically how because russia and BRICS, they have finally created alternatives to all these economic social and other programs that this unipolar world has used to hold our world bondage that we have gotten so used to, that we have depended on so much, like SWIFT, money transfer system, and the rest of them. So many other economic products that they used to hound us, they used to harass us. If you do anything, they say, we will withdraw this. You can't threaten Russia anymore. On top of that, Russia and BRICS have encouraged nations that are allied to BRICS that they should stop using US dollar in the international trade. Begin to use your own country's money so that your country's money will be scarce and then value will be piled on your money. So you see, they are effectively destroying the unipolar world order. That's why Russian president will speak every time he, he tells you boldly that the multipolar world is here to stay. The multipolar world is here to stay. The multipolar world is here to stay. Nothing can happen. And nothing can be done about it. And the guys, the kings of the unipolar world, they fear so much their fall, which is now imminent. They fear their collapse, which is now impending, and we are all seeing it happen in real time. That's why I told you they want Russia out of the way. They want to crumble everything. Instead, let's do a third world war. Let's collapse everything, destroy everything, and start over so they can launch the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution. Fewer human beings, more of robots. That's it. That's it. But God, I know, will help us. Just in case you don't believe in God, you think it's all fairy tale, I have a video coming up after this one. Make sure you watch it. I think it's part one, two, three, there about. Make sure to watch it. So you can understand that these guys know what they're doing. But one thing I know, because I believe in God, is that the God of heaven will help us and he will protect and save all of us from these demons. God bless you.